Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Workspace Spark TV. Thank you guys so much for joining us. I have an amazing guest here for you, the networker extraordinaire, my dear friend, Tammy Turner. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I, I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about her, and then we're going to dig into this interview, but I, I, I have to go through her bio. So after serving for six years in the field of public accounting and having worked at major firms like Arthur Anderson, Deloitte and Touche, Tammy realized her true passion was human resources. As such, she worked for recruiters like Robert Half Finance and Accounting, which they helped me find a few jobs. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, as a senior recruiter at Quicken Loans, Rock Financial, prior to launching her own staffing agency, Tammy is the co-owner, co-partner of a multi-million dollar staffing company, Capstone Employment Services, headquartered in downtown Detroit. Her yes. company holds Women Business Enterprise, Minority Business Enterprise, and Women-Owned Small Business Certifications. And, and there's another side to Tammy. In addition to being an entrepreneur, she's an author, speaker, trainer. Tammy's Element of Success program has helped shape the careers of students and business professionals throughout the United States and abroad. In this program, she offers training on executive presence, business etiquette, image, dining etiquette, leadership training, and skills to successfully master the art of networking. Her debut book, How to Talk to Strangers, it, a step-by-step -step guide to professional networking is a vital tool for any business professional looking to go to the next level. And I can truly attest to that. So as you guys can see, I had to tell you guys all about her. And thank you so much, Tammy, for joining us today. I am so excited to interview you. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. We, we've been uh, in the same social circles, I've been friends for years, and yes. so um, I was excited when you reached out to me, and, and a pleasure to be here today. Awesome. The, the, the first thing I, I want you to do, because Workspace Spark, the whole goal is to help people get the real deal about their careers, you know, not the politically correct stuff, um, but we want to help ladies and gentlemen rock their careers, make it happen with 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 real journeys real stories so just tell us a little bit about your career journey um and 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 your experiences in the workplace sure sure so um as you mentioned in my bio i started out in the field of public accounting and uh to be honest with you i i spent so much time at career fairs because the firm wanted to um recruit African-Americans. Mm -hmm. So I was the face of the firm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. so I was the person that went out to recruit, right? And um, I just fell in love with it. I, I fell in love with the opportunity to help mold the career or talk to young adults about careers in accounting or help them um, make that transition from college life to corporate America really um, help them learn what to expect. So many of us have failed making that transition. And um, because we had no one to talk to us and give us that behind the tool shared conversation and things that are not written in the, in the uh, company handbook. Mm -hmm. And so I had an opportunity to influence the lives of so many people that were going into that field, especially people that look like me, people of color. Mm -hmm. And um, I just had that passion for it. And so I made a, a decision to get out of accounting, out of public accounting, and um, went to work for Robert Half Finance and Accounting as a recruiter for accounting professionals. Mm -hmm. And um, I absolutely enjoyed it. I loved it. Um, uh, Robert Half just wasn't the, the company for me. It's a great company, but when you're working there, they're, they were so disciplined and regimented. You know, you had to have so many calls a day, so many connects a day. And it was, it was very, at that time, this many years ago, very micromanaged. Mm -hmm. And I just did not thrive well in that kind of environment, even right. though I loved what I did. And so fast forward, 
Um, I had an opportunity to work at Quicken Loans Rock Financial. I was a senior recruiter with them. Um, loved my time at, at Rock. Um, was just a great, great company to work for. Mm-hmm. And uh, Dan Gilbert, Bill Emerson, all those guys were just amazing. They would come down to our offices and HR. How's it going today? Anything you want to talk about? You know, and I'm thinking to myself, when I run my company, when I finally make that, I always knew I, I, I would be an entrepreneur, but when I finally make that leap, this is what I want it to be like. I want to be able to connect with my employees. Because you never see that. How many times have you worked no. in a company? You, you don't see the VP, let alone the CEO. Exactly, exactly. And they know you by name. So it was just, right. it was just a, a great company to work for. Um, I left there and I actually moved overseas. I took a job um, working as a recruiting consultant for UNICEF um, in Cambodia. Mm-hmm. And I also worked for International School of Phnom Penh mm-hmm. and uh, lived in Cambodia for three years, traveled throughout the region, Indonesia, Malaysia, Hong Kong, Japan, you name it, I was there. <laughs> and, uh, but you missed enough Christmases and Thanksgivings, you know, it was time yeah. to come home. Yeah. So came back home. I then went to work um, in food service hospitality, ran a branch um, doing recruitment there. And then I went into automotive engineering, did that for six years. And and I really um, had a niche in that industry as well. Um, Really felt the passion for it. And then it came 2017. And I was like, I just cannot in good conscience do this again. Like another day, I can't continue to work for somebody else. I was the top earner in the company. And all I kept saying to myself is that I am buying my boss's wife's red bottoms. I'm building their house in Traverse City. I'm buying their boat off my blood, sweat, and tears. And um, I came to Carrie and I said, Carrie and I were neighbors. We both lived in Palmer Woods. Um, We were in all the same social circles. And I said, listen, we can do this. Her background is human resources, mine's recruiting. And um, she wasn't quite ready at the time. Yes, she just had a baby. Uh-huh. So, I remember. Uh, yes. Yeah. So um, Logan was, was you know, still in her arms. And um, then I showed her one of my commission checks. <laughs> That'll <laughs> tell the story, won't it? <laughs> that will so tell. We're talk about it. We're going to be about it. We're going right? to be about it. <laughs> yeah. So and, and my commission check my boss at that time owed me $18,000. That was one month commission. Wow. So, you know, I said to Carrie, if he owes me 18, how much did he make? Exactly. It's, it's like and sports, said, right? Yes. The players don't make what the owners make. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. And so I said, let's cut out the middleman. Exactly. You know, you and I can do this with my background, your HR experience. Um, we can do this. And so, uh, she said, well, let me think about it. You know, three months went by and I'm like, Carrie, look, what, what are we going to do? And so she said, let me talk to my husband. Mm-hmm. Um, Daron was on board. He fully supported her 100%. And then in June of 2017, Capstone Employment Services was born. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Uh, so. Amazing, amazing. And I know you guys now have a Florida office. You are helping yes. so many people find jobs, navigate the corporate world, um, manage their networking skills all yes. that time. so yes. that's exciting I love it I love it so much you 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 talked about right there um uh, which tells me that uh we got some more to talk about after you know you got to come back for sure because such good experience and a breadth of knowledge we have got to have you back to talk about some of that other stuff I'm Sounds sure good. that somebody wants to talk about the fun of living in Cambodia and traveling across <laughs> Asia <laughs> That was absolutely amazing. I, I, that was I can an only incredible imagine. experience. I can, I can only imagine. Um, I, I wanted to have you on because it, you know, we are doing, a, it's different now. Things are different. For people like you and I who have been, our businesses, we've been operating online from day one. You know, that's right. what we've been doing in our businesses. But for a lot of people, um, and, and even in corporate, I, we're online. I've always been right. online. But for a lot of people, this is new to them. They can't stand it. They are zoomed out. They are tired. So when you talk to them about, hey, you should attend networking events 
online. They're like, how many meetings online all day? I don't want to see anybody else online. I want you to talk about, because I have this thing and I always tell people like your career is not canceled. So you just have to pivot and find other ways to do things. So, so tell, t- tell us why should people attend virtual networking events? Well, you will only get out what you put in. If you don't put in the time, if you don't invest the time, effort, and energy, you will never expand your network. You know, I know that you probably, we've all been on God knows how many Zoom calls, meetings, but that's just the way things are right now. And like you said, you you adapt, you embrace, you pivot, and you Mm -hmm. learn how to make it work for you. But if you don't invest the time, effort, and energy into networking, you're not going to get anything out of it. And, I, and here's what I can guarantee, um, guarantee you, guarantee your audience. You will never grow your network if you're only talking to people you already know. Exactly. It will never grow. It will never expand. You have to engage people that you don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, and a, Zoom is a great way to do that, actually. You know, even if you're on a Zoom chat or you're in a, on a Zoom call, conference call or or a virtual networking event. And oftentimes, you know, there's a roll call that takes place in the beginning and people go and say, you know, my name is Tammy Turner. I'm the co-owner of Capstone Employment Services. I place engineers, you know, and then the next person, you know, announces who they are. Well, if there's something that I think I need from Tammy or I want to connect with her, I have a business idea that I want to pitch or I know someone that is in need of her services, or I know a company that wants to partner with a small loan minority business, I will open up that chat and I'll send her a message. And then her and I can connect offline. Um, I'm talking about myself in the third person, which is kind of weird. But that that was a great example. I think that a lot of times people don't, they don't, number one, they have a hard enough time networking in person. And then for you to say, do it on Zoom. Now for somebody like me, I feel like it's easier on Zoom, but I am an extrovert, right? So I'm like, I didn't have to get super dressed, you know, like I didn't I didn't have to get dressed from the waist down if I didn't want to. Right. I always right. show up, you know, what you see, you're gonna see some nice things, but I'm not, you know, I didn't have to go through all this effort. I didn't have to start my car, put on a coat. I didn't have to go grab any business cards. I just came downstairs, got in front of my computer and showed up with a smile. Didn't have to grab any breath mints. Didn't have to worry about (laughs) hand sanitizer. Didn't have to worry about my palms being sweaty because I'm nervous. I'm about to shake someone's hand. Really, um, when you're engaging with someone virtually, it it takes the fear factor out of it. It The personal... Uh, interaction. You're still being, you're still able to make eye contact with someone, but you don't have all those nuances that, that make you nervous when you're face to face, when you're meeting a quote unquote stranger for the first time. Mm-hmm. So I, 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 I enjoy it either or I'm an extrovert as well. So it, you stick me in a room, I don't care where I'm at, exactly. whether it's a virtual room or, you know, a room full of people, I'm going to make it work. Exactly. But I understand everybody does not have that skill set. And so that's what the purpose of this, this podcast is, is to mm-hmm. help everyone get there. And, and I think the, the um, online, cause it, you know, you may, maybe you're attending an online conference or it's on Zoom or wh- whatever platform it is for the introvert. I really want the introvert to just think, switch their thinking around a little bit. Think about how this kind of lessens some of the anxiety of having to be in a room or right. even, I don't, anxiety might be not the right word, but you know, you're just like, do I really want to go? And how do I meet people? I like what you said about your, I am somebody in the chat. Right. That is easy way. It is, you know, Hey, how you doing? I like what you, I, I, I'd like to connect you with such and such, or maybe you need the service. It is much easier, like you said, to do that than it is to do it in person. So even for the introvert, the online networking can be beneficial. Right. And I think one of the biggest challenges in in networking is that we're afraid of rejection, right? Mm -hmm. So we're afraid that we're not going to say the right thing. We're not going to be accepted, that the person that we're engaging with is not 
going to be friendly, you know, all, and, and sometimes we're also intimidated by titles, right? Yes. So this is the CEO of so-and-so or the president of so-and-so, you know, here's what I know and believe to be true. Growth only occurs outside of your comfort zone. That's true. You will never, ever grow or get to the next level if you're afraid to make a move, That's if you're true. afraid to stretch yourself. So even for individuals that may find it difficult to engage others in dialogue, you have to psych yourself out. And then you have to also think about the benefits of it, okay? You know, this could really help me grow my business, whether your business is selling bracelets. You exactly. know, whatever your business is, exactly. whatever your side hustle is, your main hustle, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you making that connection may help grow your business mm -hmm. or may help somebody in your network. Yes. Right. So yep. it's not always about you nope. and what you can do. It may be how you can help somebody else. Exactly. Because the, the thing of it is you never know business or career. You don't know who that person is that you're sitting, that you're not sitting next to, but your screen is next to. So that that person might be able to connect you to your next job. I, I have been so many times connected to people that maybe I didn't need something or have a question for them for like five years, 10 years. You never know when you are going to... Um, need a resource or maybe you can be a resource you know as people grow in their careers they get higher positions and you don't know hey okay yes maybe that person is um, an individual contributor now but maybe they're going to eventually be a leader so if they are they become a leader and maybe you have questions around leadership you might have questions around how do I get this position or that position. And well, maybe they've already gotten that position and they've already grown in their career. So if, if they've already grown in their career and, and you are able to ask them questions, that helps you. But no, it might not be right then and there, you're on that Zoom networking meeting and you're drilling them with a million questions about how do you grow professionally? That may not be the time, but if you build those relationships and connections you never know down the road, you could help them in their career or you, they can help you. I have, I'm gonna tell you, I just tell this quick little story. I was up for a position. I was ready to get out of a position. I had me and my girlfriend, we were talking and she was like, oh, you need to, you need to call. I'll just name somebody because I don't want to tell names. You need to call Jeff because Jeff is leaving that position and you'd be great for it. And I was like, okay, cool. Me and Jeff knew each other in passing, had conversations, but that wasn't like my best bud. But because we had met and networked and talked and were good people, he was open to talking to me, told me everything I needed to know to get his position that he was leaving and was instrumental in helping me get it. So I, we, we weren't best buds hanging out. I met him. We talked in passing over the years and that was it. And that's the same thing that happens even with this virtual networking. There are some things you have to do that are different, like, right? So you've got to jot down names and then you've got to do some research because you're not passing out business cards. But that was kind of going away anyway, to be honest. People were doing the QR codes and finding people on social media, going on LinkedIn, right? So you just kind of have to do a little more research, you know, find Tammy on LinkedIn and then you look her up and then you send Tammy a message says, hey, I enjoyed hanging out with you on Zoom. Like it, it doesn't have to be hard. And you it want does. to hold on to those relationships in case you do need them down the road in your career. I, uh, I agree. I, I, I spoke a minute ago about dressing. So tell me, tell me, because I've been doing interviews and I've been doing, you know, doing this speaking circuit and just seeing the people that are showing up for these networking events, how should the people dress? <laughs> <laughs> they need your help. <laughs> listen, listen. So I'm chuckling because I am 
throughout the course of my career, I have always been ultra conservative mm -hmm. from the standpoint of the likelihood of you ever seeing me outside with, without a suit on other than I was at a, a, a sports game or something, mm -hmm. it's slim to none. Mm -hmm. um, I've since relaxed that just a bit. Yes. Um, I'm not in a suit every day, even today, you know, I have, you know, a sweater on and some mm -hmm. jeans. Right. But um, my contention is that you never get a second chance to make a first impression. And so if you're at a networking event and you're there to make some critical connections for whatever you know reason, whether it's your business or a, a, a budding entrepreneurship opportunity, whatever it is that you're trying to make connections for, you wanna make sure that you put your best foot forward. So I would like to hope that um, men are wearing, you know, blazers, a button down and, and some slacks. Right. Um, definitely not sneakers. I'd like to know that I would like to believe that women are not wearing leggings mm -hmm. to a network event <laughs> under any circumstance whatsoever. <laughs> and, and if you find yourself, maybe you, you just left work. Well, many of us are working from home, but you know, if you're in a situation where you've got on jeans and a button down and a blazer, I think that that's okay. You can mm -hmm. make that work, It is, you know, but you still have to make sure that you're coming across as polished and professional. Yes, exactly. And if, and and if it's, people, you have to convince people that they should be doing business with you. <laughs> exactly. 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 Because the thing of it is even, even in these, I have a friend he won't in on an on a virtual. He won't even wear uh, casual from the bottom down. Like me, I will. I am the right. ultimate. I will. I, as long as I'm dressed from this part that you can see me, I'm good to go. Right. But um, but it does. It will get you if you have to stand up. So do the right thing. <laughs> That's right. That's so right. Maybe you have to stand up and have your pajama pants on. Exactly. <laughs> if you don't want everybody to see your pajama pants, be fully dressed. But just show up the way, you know, remember, um, I always talk about personal brand in your career. And all of the people that are looking, I don't care if everybody, and I learned this, like I'm from the South. So in the South, um, my auntie and them were like, listen, you show up, you do you, don't worry about what everybody else does. If everybody else is looking bummy, that's not how you show up. So a lot of times on a lot of this virtual networking, you'll see a lot of t-shirts and chill and some people be laying down. No, don't, don't do it just because, and if you get on there and you're like, wow, I'm a little too dressed up. Don't get comfortable. Remember that that is your personal brand. So, sure. so just remember that always, always show up, be the best that you could be. You never know. Just like you said, Tammy, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Right. So I don't care if you're on zoom, if you're in person, if you're doing these virtual conferences, Make sure that you are, are bringing your best self physically, emotionally, mentally. Right. It's no um, different, you know, for, for us as women, if we go to the hairdresser, yeah. you know, and we walk in and he or she, every time we make an appointment, they look a hot mess. Hair all over their head, just looking like it hadn't been combed in, you exactly. know, two, three weeks. And their appearance alone, or even a makeup artist. Mm -hmm. I, every time I see you, I mean, your face is never beat. I mean, it's just. Why would I work with you? Why would I hire right. you? Why, Why would I want to hire you to do my makeup or do my hair mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. you look a mess? Exactly. You know, so the same is true in business. You know, why would a person want to partner with you or do business with you when you're not coming to the table bringing your best self? Exactly. Exactly. And, and here's one thing that I used to always tell my team, when the way you show up tells people if they can put you at their table and you represent right. them well. So right. you just have to, you know, think about that. Think about where you want to go. Do that career planning. I think that's one of the issues. A lot of people don't do a lot of career planning. They get the job and that's it. But you have to think about your future. So that's, that's part of it. So I touch base with that when I even down to, to dining etiquette, Dorothea. Mm -hmm. So it, oh. I mean, yes, it's important to know how to use a knife and a fork. Yeah. Which one to use. And and I'll have, you know, people say, well, why is that so important? Well, if you're at an interview 
maybe the interview is over lunch or it's over dinner or over mm -hmm. dinner. Mm -hmm. And they are evaluating you on everything that you do the moment you sit down. And, and it may not just be because they want to know how you're going to conduct yourself in future lunches. They want to know how you're going to represent them in front of a client. Exactly. And exactly. can you engage with this client and demonstrate to this client that you have a sense of decorum? About class. You? And a sense of class. And if you're holding your, your fork like this and sawing with it, oh. I mean, mm -mm. I'm not putting you in front of one of my clients. Not at all. <laughs> not at all. And I'm going to tell you, I had to learn how to slow down when I eat. Mm -hmm. So when I'm eating in public, like at home, you, you kind of, you're chilling, right? I eat fast. I, I just do. And I, and then, so I had to stop and look around. I'm like, okay, Dorothy, you look like you were hungry or starving or something because everybody else is still eating. So I had to learn how to purposefully slow down slow and down. eat and engage the table you know, these are just some things that you have to have to think about. And even like, you know, we do like, we'll do like a little happy hour Zoom meeting network thing. So you have your drink, you know, we'll have a little drink. I always have some water because I go to sleep if I drink. But <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't just slurp that thing down in front of the camera. Like you still have to be careful, right. ladies and gentlemen, fellas, you can't just be turning it up. You know, ladies get a right. straw or something. Just Everything that you're doing, it's different because we're all home and we're all online and you think right. you're a little more casual and you can, but still keep it class. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, what are some ways we kind of talked about a little bit, you already talked about how people can, um, how people can not feel so nervous. How, what are some other ways? You gave us one way that if, if we're in a uh, networking situation where people can, I am. What are some other ways that um, you can not feel like you're just a blip, especially if there's like a lot of people in, in the Zoom? What are some ways that you can be seen, I guess, is my best way to, to put it and noticed on the Zoom? Not, on not the I, Zoom. Keep saying, I keep saying Zoom. But the, Zoom is not the only platform. There's a million platforms, but let's just say right. online. Right. So another great way to be noticed online is really to ask questions, <laughs> you know, ask thoughtful questions. So if you're in a space where it, if it is Zoom, you need to raise your hand or whatever the case is, um, ask thoughtful questions of the speaker mm -hmm. um, so that you're engaging people. Um, mm -hmm. And then I know you mentioned um, earlier about checking out uh, an individual's LinkedIn profile. Yeah. Most business professionals have a LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't recommend trying to engage somebody on Facebook or mm -hmm. Twitter or something like that. But um, LinkedIn is where professionals go to connect and engage one another. So that's a, also a tool that we should use um, to interact with people. And you can send a message, um, hey, I saw you on this, like you mentioned before, I saw you on the Zoom call. I didn't have an opportunity to engage you. Wanted to know if I can have a follow-up conversation about blah, 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 blah. Exactly. Um, I think it's really important to include the what the, the follow-up conversation is about. Nothing irritates me more than somebody to reach out to me and say, do you have 10 or 15 minutes I can talk to you? I don't. And actually, I don't. <laughs> I, I, I really don't have 10 or 15 minutes, but maybe I can carve out some time somewhere if you tell me what this is about. Exactly. What, what do you need to talk to me about? And exactly. maybe maybe it's me, sis, and I'm gun shy from all the, the times that I had somebody reaching out to me for network marketing. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Same here. So I'm automatically thinking, okay, this is something network marketing because that yeah. was always the pitch, right? It was. Now, T, you wouldn't tell you what it was about. And on the strength of your friendship or the fact that you knew that person, you show up. You would say, okay, or you show up and then you stuck into some meat. You're like, what in the world? If, if I would have known what this was, I would have told I you I wasn't interested. Right. Don't, don't keep it a secret. I, I'm going to tell you, someone reached out to me. Um, about uh, something about career, the place I worked at, and she wanted to know what it was about. She had the perfect LinkedIn inbox. 
hi, Dorothea, I know you work at such and such, such and such. I'm looking at getting into compliance and finance and I wanted to know A, B, C, or D. Here's the thing, and people, please don't get offended. Everybody is busy. And, and yes. so, you, so you have to protect your time, protect your yes. peace and protect your time. And right. I told her, I said, I'm so sorry. I cannot jump on a call with you, but I want to help you. The best way would be for you to email me these questions and I'll respond like that because I will. Because right. if you ju- here's the thing. If you jump on a call with everybody, you will not get anything done. Anything accomplished. But if you, you when you are inboxing people on LinkedIn, do exactly what Tammy said. And I guarantee you, and it may not be right away. They might not see it right away. Don't get, don't get in your feelings about stuff like that. Right. Take it when it comes, say what you want and get a response. But if you make somebody go round the mountain, like you were saying, hey, you got 15 minutes. Uh, and then I got to say, hey, what would you like to talk about? I don't really have that kind of time. So exactly. get right to it. And, and, and 15 minutes may not be a lot to some people, but if you're you have your main job, then you've got a side hustle, then you have a husband, you've got a children or a wife and children or other activities. You have all these things. You literally don't have 15 minutes to spare. So if, I, if I'm trying to carve out time for you, you have to tell me what this is about. Yes. And then I know, okay, I have a hard stop at 115. I, I can talk to you at one. I have a hard stop at 115. Exactly. Exactly. We, we're going to have to, I'm telling you, there's so many conversations that have come out of just this one because we got to, we, we need to talk about that, the proper outreach right. and how to, how to get what you want um, from people right. that, that you, that you admire or that you're watching what they're doing and you need their, you need their help. Like you got to get straight to the point. So get straight to the point. And then, to the point. and like you said, it, it saves hurt feelings. And then you see me somewhere in the street. <laughs> And like you didn't email me back. Well, Tammy is Tammy is Tammy's funny acting. She thinks she's right. all that capstone like, employment services. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Oh, you're the person that didn't communicate to me what you needed. Right. That's why I didn't email you back. Exactly. 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 Oh my goodness, this this has been so much fun. It has been great catching up with you. I I, I want people Thank to you. know um, where to follow you, how to find you. So just, just share a little bit about your website, social, however you want people to contact you. Sure. So um, from a social standpoint, all of my information, I'm, I'm all over LinkedIn and uh, Facebook. I, I interact quite a bit on Facebook and it's just Tammy Turner, page one or two or three, one of those pages. <laughs> um, on LinkedIn, it's just Tammy Turner, Tammy L. Turner on, uh, on LinkedIn. I'm on Twitter as well. Um, our business is Capstone with a K, Capstone Employment Services, and that website is www.kapstonees.com. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it, and I know this has been helpful to a lot of people. I want everybody to stop shying away from virtual networking, yes. get on Zoom, turn your camera on, no black screen, <laughs> and make sure you are making those career moves. All right, everybody, yes. until next time. Thank you.